Hey, welcome back everyone. So uh, in this video, I actually wanted to show you a little bit of what I've been working on. Uh, just a different method for developing backgrounds inside of Clip Studio Paint. So I'm going to time lapse this one because I've shown some of this before. But essentially, all I've done is I opened up the 3D material assets and then went over to the top right and grabbed the box prism and brought it into the canvas. And then I copied and pasted it multiple times. And each time I just stretched it around I also rotated some of the, the blocks and the reason why I did that is because a lot of times as artists we can struggle to maybe get some of that variation in the scenes, right? We try to rotate certain things but then it becomes more complex in the perspective of, okay, these ones converge to this vanishing point but then we have to create alternate vanishing points for objects that are rotated. And so what I like about this approach is that it's sort of bypasses that. You could rotate these buildings all over the place if you wanted to. I mean, obviously you don't want to go too crazy with it, but you can stretch them around, you can rotate them, keeping them all on that same ground plane. And keep in mind, if they're all in the same 3D layer, it'll use the one camera. Now, the, the confusing part is that it retains the perspective rulers for the first few I think you start with. I think it stuck with those ones at least in my particular scene so you'd probably have to generate new vanishing points for each building that you turn because again you can't trust all these uh perspective rulers once you start making those those changes but i'm actually not even going to use that i'm not going to use the vanishing points at all you, you can see here i'm showing you that some of these align and some don't what i really wanted to show you is more of a designed way of thinking about this so now that you have these blocks in place, you can easily move the camera around. We can now take each piece of the buildings and you see I literally copied a piece of the building and I'm now distorting it to where it's now flat on uh, a new uh, surface, a 2000 by 3000 pixel document. And you have to keep holding uh, edit uh, free transform, it's command shift T I believe, but you see I'm distorting it into place where that grid that was already on those buildings is now lined up flat. And that's that's the main goal. It's kind of like UV mapping when you work with 3D. That's really the approach I'm taking here. And so essentially now I just draw out some sort of design element, you know, some something basic, easy to reproduce. So the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because I feel like at first this can seem like a lot of extra work. But then after you get enough of these patterns, say, in your, your library, this could be a really fast way to sort of build buildings, in a sense, you know, like design buildings. Uh, now, is it to replace drawing them in, in tr with traditional methods? Of course not. It's never that. It's more just to give you another tool in your toolbox, and maybe it helps you when you're struggling with a particular scene, and it just becomes another thing that you can reference and go, you know, I'm, I'm having a tough time with this particular building at this angle or what I like this for really is actually the entire scene creation. Uh, and just to explain a little bit of this, how it picks up speed. Once you make one pattern, you can hold uh, shit with the move tool. You got to click the move tool, which is K for the shortcut on the move tool. And you hold shift alt. And if you drag in one continuous motion, it will lock the angle in which you drag and make the copy at the same time. So you can, you'll get a lot faster with this approach. Also notice what I'm doing here is I'm actually copying the windows to, you know, sort of past it, right? So I went three windows over uh, and I went past that edge, but I kept them as a separate layer so that I could easily distort them and add that little piece of trim back into that initial area. Now the second one fits pretty much perfectly because I used the center line. So again, there's all these little techniques. Uh, also the, the drop shadows. So I didn't do as much as I could have here with the drop shadows, but if you kind of know going into the building facade, the side of it, what you're gonna do, you can pre-implement some of those drop shadows. So I leave those out. I find them not to be too difficult to add after the fact, but there's another part that I'm gonna show you. If you can keep those in mind, you start getting more and more dimensional buildings. So now I've brought this over to the other window and I'm gonna use Command Shift T. I'm gonna bring those corners right to the side of that building. You see everything sort of snaps into that area pretty quickly. Might need a little bit of tweaking, zooming in on the corners, stuff like that. 
but it's there. Now, it looks overly flat, right? Of course, this is, isn't done and it's not something I would recommend you leave this way, but I can now add shadows or drop shadows or insets. I can even raise areas away from this structure pretty easily because all that information is right there in front of me. I'm using a shift click method. You gotta remember you also got the straight line feature inside of Clip Studio, which is very effective. You can also draw the lines past the areas you need to and, and go back with your selection tool and delete them. So all sorts of ways to clean this up. And so now what I'm doing, I noticed that when I zoomed in though, the pixelation was too much. Okay, so again, something else that you're just gonna learn and figure out as you go. Uh, so for this larger document, I needed a bigger initial start or a bigger end result, I should say. I increased the document on the right and made that much larger so that when I zoom in, I still have good line clarity. So, but again, that's like anything else. The first couple, you're gonna wanna do smaller demos so that you figure out what the good, the best pixel data is for you for things like establishing shots. They can obviously be much smaller for things like, um, you know, close-ups or smaller panels, but generally big establishing shots, you might want a 5,000 or 7,000 pixel document. But that's something we all need to figure out on our own because uh, we all have different needs there. So again, you can see I'm adding these drop shadows. Now what I'm showing you here is that what I should have done really is did the one panel of windows in full detail with shadow and everything in perspective right there. So after I brought it back over, I could have added the shadows and then copy those over to the left. Likewise, I can now copy this with the shadows, flip it horizontally and distort it on the right. So again, you start to see these areas where you can really recycle your work and you can skip some steps. Uh, you know, just like if I was gonna add all these imperfections and textures to this after the fact, I'm gonna probably create brushes for that as well or maybe a page of little nicks and imperfections and I save just that layer, just that page so that I can easily implement it, just like dry brush effects. You see that a lot in comics now. And it's really effective because they can be applied to so many different things and it sort of adds this quick grit and grime to an otherwise uh, too, you know, too smooth of a thing. You know, like you don't want these buildings to be too awfully clean and smooth and that's where you really have to go back and add some you know, sort of after effects to this type of work. So that's really it. I just wanted to give you another set of ideas on how you could build out your own scenes. And remember, the more of this stuff you make, these patterns, uh, it will speed things up quite a bit for you. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think, and bye for now.